I mentioned in a previous recording that melanin is a, a protein pigment that makes your skin darker, but it also protects your skin cells from damage from UV radiation. UV radiation is radiation that um, is emitted by the sun. That's the main way that you would be exposed to it. So your skin can get cancer. And so cancer is just any time you've got abnormal cells in the body dividing uncontrollably. And so as those cells are dividing uncontrollably, they're taking over other structures and they're taking resources away from other healthy cells in your body. So skin cancer can be caused by exposure to UV radiation. So the more direct the exposure and the longer you're exposed will increase your chances of skin cancer. That's why things like tanning beds and um, people that kind of lay, lay out in the sun to get a tan all the time, they are at a higher risk of developing skin cancer because of the increased exposure to UV radiation. But cancer, cancer can also be um, just caused by genetics and also exposure to other chemicals. Um, so it really kind of depends, but the one that you can control the most is your exposure to UV radiation. And so that's why it's good to wear sunscreen and wear a hat when you're going to be outside. And um, you, need, you need some exposure to UV radiation, but too much is not good either. Now, skin cancer can either be benign or malignant. So benign means that it's not really dangerous. Um, so there are some types of skin cancer that, you know, if they're left for a long amount of time, then they might spread and cause problems. But you may be able to, to just have it removed and you'll be fine. But it's also possible for it to become more dangerous and that when it's more dangerous, it's called malignant, and that's because it can metastasize. So metastasis, or metastasize, is when cancer spreads beyond its um, original location. So for example, some skin cancers can travel within the body and start affecting other structures, like the brain and the lungs, which is more um, critical against your survival. So there are three main types of skin cancer. There's basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. So basal cell carcinoma, it affects the stem cells in the deepest layer of the epidermis that are actively dividing. It causes uh, something that looks kind of like this. So it's usually a raised bump, it's uneven, it might look like a scar or something like that. And basal cell carcinoma is the most common type of skin cancer in the United States. Um, if it's caught early, then the prognosis is really good. They can usually either just surgically remove it, um, or cryosurgery is where they can take something um, and freeze it off. And some topical ointments, topical just means that you put it on your skin, that can also help to remove the cancer and treat it. Squamous cell carcinoma also affects um, cells in the epidermis, but these are cells that are kind of in the middle layers of the epidermis. Um, it forms skin lesions, so you can see this picture right here. Um, squamous cell carcinoma is more aggressive than basal cell carcinoma, so it's more likely to metastasize if it's left untreated. But that being said, it's still fairly slow growing, um, but it's good to catch it early because treatment options are um, a lot easier and your long-term pro prognosis is better if it's caught early. So treatment options may include surgery to remove the cancerous cells or possibly radiation therapy to kill the, to, sorry, kill the cancer cells. Now the least common but the most dangerous type of skin cancer is called melanoma. And this is caused by an uncontrolled growth of melanocytes. So when those melanocytes start dividing like crazy, you get melanoma. Um, as I said, it's the most fatal type of skin cancer. It's highly likely to metastasize and um, kind of take hold in other tissues in the body. If caught early, it can be treated, but once it has metastasized and spread, it's a lot harder to treat. So they can do surgery to remove the cancerous area. Um, they can do immunotherapy in which your immune system is uh, stimulated to attack those cells. 
Um, there may be some chemotherapy and radiation involved. But the key thing with melanoma, as with all cancers, the earlier it is caught and treated, the better the prognosis or outcome is likely to be. Now, when diagnosing melanoma, um, doctors, dermatologists um, are looking for the following things, and they call this the A, B, C, D, E kind of diagnosis list, if you will. So melanoma shows up as a mole on the surface of the skin with the following characteristics. So first of all, they tend to be asymmetrical. So asymmetrical means that it's not a pure circle. All right, you see how it's uh, kind of smaller over here and bigger over here. Borders, so we look for irregular edges. So once again, it's not a nice smooth edge, but you've got these kind of bumps and dips all around the edge of it. Color, so the color you can see you can have darker areas, lighter areas. There might even be other colors associated with it, um, but especially a lot of variation. Diameter, so if it's larger than six millimeters, which is about a quarter of an inch, and a um, kind of an easy visualization is think about the eraser on a pencil. So the eraser on a pencil is about six millimeters in diameter. So if it's bigger than the eraser on a pencil, then it's more likely to be melanoma. And then evolving means that it's changing over time. So perhaps the borders are changing, it's getting bigger, um, the color is changing from darker to lighter. Um, it just means that it's, it's changing, it's evolving. And so this criteria helps to rule out which melanomas, or I'm sorry, which moles are melanoma and which other moles are just benign.